Hi there, I'm Peter Millard, and in this week's 10 minute workshop, well, it definitely comes with a wallet warning. It's coming up next. So I want to talk a little bit about indulgence in tool buying. Um, indulgence, it, what do we mean by that? It's not greed, it's not gluttony. It's just treating yourself once in a while. For example, me and my wife had a wedding anniversary last week. We went out for a nice meal. Uh, swanky restaurant up in a very tall building called The Shard. Uh, you, if you follow me on uh, Instagram, you might have seen some of the pictures there. Uh, great views, nice meal, fabulous company, of course, uh, uh, and uh, an eye-watering price. It's not the sort of thing you would do every day. It's not the sort of thing we do every week or even every month. My waistline and my bank balance couldn't manage it. But it's a, a once-in-a-while indulgence. It's a treat. It's just something nice to do now and then. And thinking about tool buying, when you're starting out on this woodworking, on this making journey, you've got to spread your tool budget pretty thin. You buy all kinds of cheap tools just to have a tool of that type. Uh, we've all done it. We've all been there. As you get better and older and perhaps a little bit wealthier, you can buy other nicer tools to replace them or to supplement them. But generally speaking, when you start out, you buy relatively cheap tools. And I love cheap tools. Cheap tools are fantastic. I'm a big fan of low price tools that do the job really well within their limitations. But even when you're starting out, even when you're first buying tools, it's just nice to have something nice. It's nice to indulge yourself just once in a while. Now, sometimes this indulgence takes the form of a nice hand tool. Sometimes it's a swanky power tool. Sometimes it's just a tool that only does one job, uh, but maybe it's just something you really like or something that you use a lot. And this was my first indulgence. Yes, I've had a few, but this was my first one. This is a Bosch digital level. It's the, you know, I had a look, DNM. 60L. Um, before Bosch digital levels came along, digital levels were called inclinometers and they cost an absolute fortune. This was not cheap, but it was a lot less than the inclinometers that came before it. Uh, and I loved this level. Uh, I bought this about 15 years ago. I got a bit of a deal on it uh, at a trade show. Uh, I think probably the last trade show I went to as a, as a punter, to be honest. Uh, uh, and it was it just been absolutely fabulous. It's a 600 mil, so two foot level. It's the one I use almost all the time. And if you've seen any of my previous videos over the last year or 18 months, uh, you'll have seen this turn up in a number of those. Uh, unfortunately, around about this time last year, it started giving completely crazy readings, utterly wackadoodle, you know, five, 10 degrees out. Uh, that's that's actually a good thing because if this had failed gradually by a half a degree or a degree then I wouldn't have noticed until the shelves or whatever were built until somebody put a vase of flowers on the on the waters looking like it's at a funny angle. It did give me a bit of a problem though because suddenly I don't have a two foot level anymore. So what do I do without my most used level? Well, I struggle on manfully. I've still got a little 300 mil digital level, only reads to a tenth of a degree. So I can't kid myself on being quite as accurate as I can with that one that reads to a 20th or 500ths, as I like to call it. But I've got other levels. I've got a, a 900 level and a 1200 of regular bubble type levels. And they're perfectly decent. The 600 is particularly useful though, because it fits very neatly into most things that I fit, alcohol units and shelves and that sort of stuff. Typically they don't get wider than about 800 mil and a 900 mil level, oddly enough, won't fit into an 800 mil space. Now the new versions of this Bosch is only about 100 quid or so. Uh, and I thought about repairing it and I thought about replacing it. I just sort of never quite got around to it. Uh, and then in conversation with my podcast, co-host uh, Andy Matt, Gus with Andy Matt. Did you know I had a podcast? Have I mentioned this? I've got a podcast. It's called Measuring Up. Uh, it's good fun. It's about uh, me and Andy Matt, Gus with Andy Matt on YouTube, just talking about tools and, and nonsense, uh, basically two blokes uh, talking like they were down the pub, but without the booze, unfortunately. Uh, the, the whole of season one is out at measuringuppodcast.com. Uh, season two starts in a few weeks, so uh, come and join the party. Anyway, we were chatting. Uh, Andy said, oh, well, what you want to really look at then is 
superior levels. Now, I'd never heard of superior levels, and I've got to admit, any company that calls itself superior levels is kind of setting itself up for a fall, do you think? Uh, and then I had a quick look at the website, and somehow, whoops, I managed to buy one, and this becomes my next indulgence. Uh, superior levels are absolutely beautiful. They are things of beauty, they are hard-working tools that work hard, uh, they are beautifully engineered from stainless steel and aircraft grade aluminium and seasoned hardwoods, uh, made in Britain down in Somerset by a two-man team and uh, actually not even that expensive. This is the traditional level in raw aluminium and hardwood. Of course superior levels don't just do the traditional range, they also do the all trade range. This is black powder coated, a bit sleeker, a bit sharper, a little more modern looking. I couldn't decide which to have so naturally I bought two of them. I may well end up with a full set. You can have levels anywhere from 300 mil all the way to two meters plus I believe. Uh, they are absolutely fantastic quality pieces of kit. One of the things that makes me wince when I occasionally see guys out in the street is you'll see them with a level slung over their shoulder and a tool bag hanging off the other end. It always makes me go, ooh, those levels were never made for that kind of abuse. Uh, I'm pretty sure these levels could take that sort of abuse easily. It's not something I plan to try. Feel free to try it with your own levels, of course. Uh, uh, obviously, uh, with objects of this beauty, that are highly mobile, they're also highly nickable, uh, and Superior Level is one of the simplest theft deterrents in the business. That's the ability to have your own name engraved into the level itself. That uh, absolutely guarantees that everybody knows that it's yours. Now that kind of goes without saying that tools of this quality, tools of this caliber, aren't going to be cheap. You wouldn't want them to be. They're made right here in Britain and you want the company that makes them to continue to do well. The real surprise for me though was that they're not actually that expensive. Certainly these two levels, one from each range, a 900 and a 600 mil, cost me a lot less than this little Bosch digital level cost me 15 years ago. Now I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be working still in 15 years time, but I'm equally sure that these levels will be working perfectly and whether they've got my name on them or yours, these are absolutely my latest indulgence. Uh, and just for balance, that nice meal that we had with my wife, uh, that cost way more than these two levels. That was an indulgence. Now it goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway, I have no commercial connection with superior levels. They're not paying me to endorse their product, I wish. I'm just a happy customer who's bought a couple of their levels. I wanted to spread the word amongst you guys because I know how much you appreciate a finely honed piece of kit. Uh, not outrageously expensive, excellent value for what you get. Uh, they are highly recommended. I, I love mine. These are absolutely my latest indulgence. And I hope they're yours too. Um, that's it for this week. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope uh, you found it useful and interesting. I hope uh, the wallet isn't wincing too hard at the thought of being a bit more spendy. But thanks for watching. Uh, if you did enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up uh, and do consider subscribing if you haven't already done so. Then you'll be notified whenever I put up something new, provided that you hit that bell when you subscribe. But well, that's it for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care.